Hello guys, Sid the IT guy here and in this video I will take you an example of how to build a page where if you click on the sync products button then it will call the Shopify API like so uh, how I show it here and I will take you through an example where I call the product JSON API uh, the sync ID parameter and we will sync all the data from Shopify store to into our database and uh, the result will look something like this where we can list out all the products that we have into our Shopify store okay so let's begin so here I have opened up uh, my development store which is Laravel project 2 and I have added five uh, demo products here that I wish that I had in my local system so I could do whatever I wanted with it in our app so if I show you the products table then there is nothing here so what we are targeting here is pulling all the data from Shopify store and putting it here in our database for, uh, for us to use so in our previous video we saw that we created a sync uh, endpoint to sync all the orders customers and products I'll be using a generic example so it would be helpful to you to understand uh, only one of these jobs but the rest too uh, you can check out the code at uh, github.com I will provide the repository link in the description box. Please be sure to check that out. So, the first, uh, since we are looking at products here, so this is the endpoint that I will focus on. So, I defined it as sync products method. So, let's go to this controller. There is nothing here. So, what I will do, I will create a public function here and I will say sync products. And inside that, I will do try catch. And inside that, if anything happens, then I should be able to see it right away. Yeah. So what I will do here, we are we already are using the middleware auth in the construct function itself. So I know that this is authenticated. So I will take the user, which is the auth user default, and I will take the store as a user arrow get store. I'm sorry get Shopify store so this is a method that I defined in the auth uh, user model so you can find it yeah and after that uh, what I want to do is simply fire the job uh, sync products oh I'm sorry so inside that yeah product so here I have a job that I already created inside the jobs folder, inside Shopify and inside sync. So I will import that here and I will call the dispatch now method. So yeah, it will be, it will get deprecated, but don't worry about that. It works for now. So we can update that later. Sorry, I will do return back with success product sync successful so I will flash it in the session so we get to see this message yeah so we will return back where we came from with the success index and we will say product sync successful so let's test uh, this much out if I click sync products, then I get this message product sync successful. So let's write the code that will actually take the data and push it in our database. So I will close this out. Just some files out. Yeah, so right here, this job file. Uh, this will accept two parameters user and store. So let's write some code to do that. User comma store it's right here and I will define to like that and I will do use function trade use best trade I need these two right here. 
Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to keep calling the products JSON API and I want to loop uh, through it until there is no more data to loop through. So what we could do here is uh, on the Shopify dev side, Shopify API reference, and inside that, let's go to rest reference. Then inside that, let's go to products reference. Yeah. So here we have the list of products. This is the API that we will call. It's a get request. And we have the endpoint is products.json. So we can call it. And there is some fields that we have right here. So what I want to do here is the since ID parameter that I want to look at. So the since ID parameter will help me look through the products API one by one. Actually, Shopify has this cursor uh, concept where uh, if you look through the raw products, then you have a cursor and you can use that in the headers um, that Shopify returns to call the next page of the products, but we are not gonna do that. So this since ID will help us and let's continue. So first thing I wanna start off is the try catch method. And inside that, I will do exception E. And I will log it out. Yeah. After that, So let's uh, define the since ID as zero, or we can do not anything, right? So then we can say um, endpoint equals while products equals blank. Products not equal to now. And products count of products is greater than zero. So then we can do response equals. So we can change this ID to zero. And then we can do since ID equals this arrow make an API call to Shopify, the method is get, the endpoint is the endpoint, the URL params are null, headers, and request body is null. So we can have that. <clears throat> Let's see what the response we get. Yeah. So inside this, we have the products index, and inside that, we have our five products. So what we could do, um, if, so, products equals response body products, or it is null. After that, what we can do, um, yeah, so now that we have got a products array right here, let's loop over it. So what we can do for each 
products as product this arrow update or create this product in db and i can send this product index here so let's define this function right here yeah so let's db it out let's see what what we what we have here yeah so now we have the id title body html and all that so we can create an uh, payload out of this and we can save it so i will use the update or create method so i will do try catch exception e yeah so i will log it out the same way i did here So let's uh, make the payload pulse store ID equals this arrow store arrow ID. Oh, I'm sorry, table ID. Yeah. Then we can say ID is product ID. Which columns do I have here? So table ID is auto increment. So ID we just did that store ID, title and body HTML inventor. So let's uh, let me fill these out. So after we took all the fields that we could uh, from the product response, which we received here, and based on the table columns that we had here, then uh, I populated the payload like this, and then I created an update array where i do not want uh, the same product to be inserted multiple times so that is why i created this update array and the models product which just means uh, this is the product model uh, resolved as another name so it will call the update or create method this will take care of the non-duplicating issue and uh, the first parameter is the update array that i created here and the payload that i created above so this uh, seems correct and uh, so we will use it first here with the value of zero and uh, we get the products and then we loop over it and in each instance we keep updating the since id variable with the product id we see from shopify so when it exists exits this loop then uh, the since id variable will have the last product id and then it will loop again here and it will get passed here the last id that it encountered so from that id we will get another 250 products and we can loop over that so this seems fine so let's run this and let's see what happens if i run it yeah it says products in successful let's check our database previously we had nothing and let's see what happens yeah so there we go store id 2 id this much and the same things we received right here so published at uh, we didn't capture i think so that is why tags yeah so all of these things are json encoded also so in the payload you will see that uh, for the variants options and images i json encoded these values because obviously they are arrays and they will contain multiple indexes but if you want, you can create a separate table and you can keep that data in it. So that is how we can capture uh, the products. And what I can do here is inside Shopify for the products page, I can simply say um, user equals auth user. And then I can say store equals user arrow get Shopify store. And after that, I can say products equal store arrow get products select name. I'm sorry, I have to check in my UI. So the name, price, 
not the price i think i should say type because the price uh, is not on the product level it's on the variant level so here i can say product type right name oh i'm sorry not name it's title yeah product type then we can say vendor and created ad so i will select vendor and created ad yeah this get products method is under uh, the model i can show you that under store here we have the get products so it has a has many relationship so out of which i will uh, only select these columns that i did right here so then i can say um so maybe i need to do something like this i think yeah close this out yeah so now if i did that then here i have five items correct so let's um yeah so in d body i will do i will use the is set plate directive and i will end it here then i will do if products not equal to null and products not equal to false and products i can say i can null i can say yeah and if then i can loop over it for each products as e arrow product then i can end that for each here yeah and i can use the tr thing the tb yeah five times i will put the key here Yeah, so now we are showing all our uh, products here. So here I can do key plus one, so black like that. So if I search pinkish t-shirt right here, yeah, it works. Yeah, so we already have a data data table thing going here from jQuery. Okay, so I will use the same thing to sync all the orders and the customers from our Shopify store. Um, so this video ends right here. We are almost at the end of our tutorial. So I would highly recommend that uh, you check out the description box where I have uh, kept the GitHub repository link. Pull it on your system, run it, and uh, let me know. If you have any doubts, please mention the timestamp. So I'll be happy to help you out. And uh, if you want me to review your code, then you can raise pull requests for that repo. And I'll be happy to do a video just reviewing those pull requests. And I can discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the code that people submit to me. So I think this uh, video is wrapped now. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you again next time. Peace.